In this video, we're gonna cover basic infield fielding and throwing technique for fast pitch and slow pitch softball. So if you wanna play infield and you're new to softball or you're a coach and you're working with beginning players, this video is gonna help you get the fundamentals, a great foundation for improved softball throwing mechanics and fielding mechanics in the infield. All right, so we'll start with fielding position, but check out in the links in the description, you'll see timestamps. You can jump back and forth from fielding position to the throwing basics, to the T drill, to the Y drill. You can jump around this video, but we'll start here with fielding mechanics for softball. All right, so the first thing, let's talk about fielding position. If this is a ground ball, it's hit towards me. My goal is that my feet are about shoulder width, maybe a little bit wider, never really more narrow. And I'm gonna have my chest up, my glove out in front, and my butt back, so I'm gonna have a shallow bend at my knees, something like this. We don't wanna be hunched over, and we don't wanna have our gloves in between our legs. The reason for this is that if my glove is out here and the ball takes a bad hop, it's more likely to bounce up, hit my chest, fall back in front of me, and then I can pick it up and continue to make the play. Also, it helps me keep my eyes on the ball longer, whereas if my eyes go down, I'm gonna lose it at the last minute. So fielding position, butt back, chest up, hands out, and you should sort of fan your glove wide. For a lot of beginner players, they don't know to really push their glove open, but the glove needs to be open so we can receive the ball. The next thing, this action is called funneling. Funneling is the act of taking a ground ball when we field it and bringing it to our center all in one motion. This should be done softly, so as the ball is bouncing, we're bringing it into our center. This is important, and it's important to practice so that once we get it here, we're gonna start our footwork and from here, we're gonna be in a consistent place each time to make good throws. We need the ball essentially at our belly button and then at our midsection to make consistent throwing mechanics, all right? So funneling is a really important step. You don't wanna feel the ground ball out here and then start running with it out like that. That's gonna make your throwing mechanics much more inconsistent. So easy ways to practice funneling. A, find a rebound wall in a tennis ball. You can bounce it to yourself and just work on, as soon as it hits your glove or your bare hands, you bring it into your belly button each time. We also do dailies, which is when you just roll each other ground balls or bounce them about 15 feet away as part of the daily activities for a team, whether when you're at practice or if you're just getting warmed up. So this would just be working on your funnel, working on your funnels, working on your funnels, all right? There's also forehands and backhands, which we won't cover in this video, because the main thing, the main fundamental that you want to know today is just how do we square up to a ball, funnel it, and get our feet moving with good footwork to make a good throw. So once we've gotten in good fielding position, because the ball is coming towards us, we've centered our body up with it, we're in good fielding position, and as the ball hit my mitt, I funneled it to my center. The next thing is I'm going to point my right ankle bone as a right-handed thrower. If you're a left-handed thrower, it'd be your left ankle bone, but left-handed throwers don't play third, short, or second, so just keep that in mind. I'm gonna point my right ankle bone towards my target. So if I'm gonna throw back towards the camera, towards home plate, I'm gonna make my first step forward, or really just sort of in place, turning my ankle here, and then my next foot is gonna make a straight line towards my target. This is really important. The number one mistake beginners make is by messing up their footwork so they land with an open chest to their target rather than a closed chest. Closed chest means that my throwing, my, the target that I'm throwing to cannot see the logo on my shirt. If I have opened up in the air, in the air and I am landing open like this, my throwing arm is gonna be in a different position. My chest is gonna be already rotated, which means I've lost some of the power in my hips. So it's critical to get the footwork correct because correct footwork helps us get closed. And when we're closed, we get maximum amount of power from the rotation of our hips and our upper body. So if I'm throwing directly back to the camera and I've just fielded and funneled my ground ball, my right ankle is gonna point to the, to the camera. And then my hands are still together at this point. Then my left foot's gonna come around as my hands separate and I'm gonna make a line towards my target. My front foot is gonna point somewhere between directly at the camera and maybe at a two o'clock angle to the camera. It's not really gonna point at three o'clock, all right? So somewhere from here to here. Then, so I'm here, ankle, here. My glove arm is gonna be 
not exactly pointed at my target, but my upper arm will mostly point towards my target. My shoulder blade is gonna pull back and my glove arm is gonna start the rotation of my upper body as I make my throw. This is gonna happen automatically, so don't worry about it too much with beginners. The main thing with beginners is to not overcomplicate the motion. So if they can get their fielding, their fielding mechanics correct, get their first couple steps correct, and they can get to this position okay, then just let them throw the ball and their body will start to figure it out. Humans were throwing objects for a long time and the best ones figured this part out and then their body did the rest. So don't overly coach with beginners or if you're learning this for the first time, don't worry too much about where your arm needs to be when this foot hits, what your glove arm is doing. Just work on the fielding technique, getting your footwork right, and making sure that you're closed and staring down your upper arm as you aim towards your target. So if I'm here and then I just say go essentially to myself and throw the ball, things are gonna work out mostly fine. So that's a really important thing. Don't overcoach beginners or don't think too much if you're a beginner, beginner yourself. So in learning or teaching this, I like to use two really simple drills. The first one is a T drill and I will just make a T on the ground like this and we'll go over the footwork slowly to get it down. So I'm gonna start with my feet on the, my toes on the line, this part of the T and then my other part of the T is here. I'm gonna field, funnel, ankle, step and separate. My arms are gonna separate. So toes on the line, field, funnel, step, step. Field, funnel, step, step. Then as players get good at this, speed it up. So and then the goal is that it happens all at once, which is as soon as I feel the ground ball, and I start to funnel, my feet are moving at the same time. So essentially when it hits my glove, it's gonna be funneled and my feet are gonna move at the exact same pace and it'll look like this. And then at that point, what you wanna do is encourage the players that you're coaching or if you're learning this yourself, to take a shuffle or two. If you have to make the throw really quickly, you might not shuffle, but if you have some time, which is gonna be the case a lot of the time, you'll add a shuffle or two and it'll look like this. And I'll throw this one here for you. So that's the T drill and the progression through it from slow to faster to all in one motion to adding a shuffle. Now the next drill is the Y drill and this is a progression because it's gonna actually make my line towards first base, but it's not any harder than the T drill. The T drill is actually harder because I've got to move my hips a longer distance to get my line right. So I'll keep my original part of the T and then I'll make sort of a 45 degree angle line to first base. So now I have a Y, kind of a wonky looking Y. And then I'm gonna field, funnel, step, step. And this is gonna look a lot more smooth because it's easier. Again, I don't have to turn my hips 90 degrees. I only have to turn them 45. So once players are comfortable at a faster speed with the T drill and the Y drill, then the goal is for someone to roll them ground balls slowly because as they start thinking about actually feeling the ground ball, things are gonna be tougher because they're gonna have more things to focus on. So start with easy rollers first, so then they can just square up, field it, funnel it, and make their throw. And then you can start to move the ground balls around and bounce them a little bit. So I'll show you just how you sort of move through ground ball. We won't talk about getting around and getting angle, which is something more advanced infielders do. Just for basics, they can just attack it and make their throw. So again, easy rollers are best for beginners. I'm just gonna attack it, right foot, left foot, and you can see I'm already starting to make a line. That, that should start to happen on its own because it just starts to cut down the distance that I have to go, rather than being square, then turning. So as players get better at charging the ball, which is when you attack it forward, you can encourage them to break their right foot down first 
and then have their left foot come in front. So they're already making this angle as they field. So then this is a much easier footwork transition. Do one more. So I'm gonna charge. And make my throw. So let's summarize. If you or the softball players you're coaching are brand new, then the key components of getting your throwing down are number one, good fielding position, number two, funneling the ball, number three, good footwork, number four, getting closed, which is a result of good footwork, and number five, not overcomplicating the process. Don't think too much about where your arm is, what your glove's doing, just work on fielding position, funneling, good, good footwork, and being closed with the front arm. If you do all that stuff, your throwing will make dramatic improvements at the beginner level. After that, you know, a couple months of practice down the road, then you can start to watch some of my other videos, take my online course, working on all the more intricate parts of the throwing motion. But don't overcomplicate it first. If you're a beginner working on softball, whether it's fast pitch or slow pitch, or you're coaching beginners, okay? If you have any questions, leave them in the description below. Check out my online courses if you want a step-by-step -step process to all of this, and I'll see you here in the next video.